Welcome back to another episode of Optics, Faith and Latinidad with Gabriel Salguero. It's been a while since I've been with you, but I'm so excited that you're still connected to this podcast. And today, I'm coming back with a topic that so many of you have asked me to talk about, and that's faith and advocacy. This is important because lately we've had some people think and say that faith and advocacy are not compatible. So for the next few minutes, if you sit down with your cup of coffee or your tea and listen for a while on why I think faith and advocacy are not only compatible, they're complementary. Faith without works is dead, says James. And so faith is not just believing something. Faith is believing to the degree that you collaborate with that thing or that person in whom you believe. And so faith in the realms of the public spheres, be they government or media or entertainment or medicine or religion or family, what Bill Bright and others called the seven mountains, is a call to action. Because we believe that God is at work in the world, we're honored to co-labor with what God is doing in the world. And one of the ways we co-labor with God is through advocacy. You might remember that Proverbs 31 tells you, speak up, speak up for those who are poor and needy. That's Proverbs 31, 8 and 9. It's actually where we get the word advocacy. Vocal, voz, means the voice or the sound. And, and so to speak up literally means to raise your voice. Advocacy literally means to raise your voice. And that's what the book of Proverbs is telling us, that we as followers of Jesus Christ should speak up to those, for those who are vulnerable, those who are in need, those who are pr- oppressed. You might remember that in Jesus' opening sermon in Nazareth, what some people have called the Nazareth Manifesto, he's reading from the prophet Isaiah, and he tells the audience in that reading that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him and his, has anointed him to bring liberty to the captives, to set the captives free. And that's advocacy. That's speaking up for those who are oppressed or marginalized. Lately, there's, there's been a debate in public about what do Christians have to do with justice? And, and somehow justice has gotten a bad name. And when the, all of Scripture is filled with the word justice. Actually, in the New Testament, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, your translation says, and its righteousness. In Spanish, y su justicia. Tells us that the kingdom of God is established in justice. The book of Psalms 89 says that God sits on a throne of justice. The Torah tells us that God carries a scepter called justice. When the people of Egypt oppressed the Israelites, God raised up Moses to advocate, to speak up for them. You might remember that over there in Exodus 3, when God first reveals God's name to Moses as Yahweh, it's in the context of advocacy. God tells Moses, I've heard the cries of my people. I'm moved to compassion. I will go down to deliver them. I've seen their sufferings. And so advocacy is consistent with the character of the triune God. I'm not, can I tell you, I'm a little concerned that somehow, because of perhaps political reasons or bad theology or bad spiritual formation, we have not seen advocacy as part of our discipleship, part of our prophetic call of speaking truth to power and speaking truth with the power challenged, or the power depressed or oppressed. And so speaking up, if you're listening today, is consistent with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You might remember that Paul himself speaks up in the book of Philemon when he starts talking about freedom and setting the captives free. You might also remember that most of the Hebrew Bible is about setting Israel free from Egypt, the exiles returning out of Babylonian captivity or Assyrian captivity to reestablish themselves, and and Nehemiah advocates, or Esther advocates for her people together with her relative Mordecai. And so this is important. 
This is important, and don't let anybody tell you different. Advocacy is not a modern term. Speaking up for the widow, the orphan, and the stranger is part and parcel the essence of the gospel. And so when some people start to decry prophetic advocacy or biblical justice, it could be that they haven't re read deeply or broadly about the character of God or the actions of God in all of Scripture. And so when, when we talk about advocacy, we don't talk about it in a partisan lens. We talk about it rooted in the character of God who sends Moses to deliver, who has Esther speak up for her people, who has Nehemiah advocate for resources for the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. And in the New Testament, you might recall that in Matthew 25, Jesus himself talks about seeing those who are on the margins. Where, you might ask? It's in that famous passage of Matthew 25, when it says the Son of Man will return with all of his angels with him, and he's going to judge the ethne. Your translation says the nations. And so this is, this is a, a political judgment of nations on how they treated the most vulnerable how they treated the marginalized, how they treated the hungry, the naked, the incarcerated, and the immigrant. And Jesus himself tells us that nations will be judged in part by how they, they treated those on the margins, including the widow, the orphan, the stranger, the hungry, and the incarcerated people. And so why is it important for us to highlight advocacy as part of our faith? Because if you believe that God is at work in the world. You're hungry to go labor w with what God is doing. Many of you have read the documents of Lasan, and Lasan reminds us that we have an integrated view of the gospel, that our gospel is in words, proclamation, evangelism, church planting, mission, and indeed compassionate ministry, works of mercy, and works of justice. And so the gospel, in a holistic way, when we read the totality of the gospel, it calls us not just to proclaim the word, but to live the word out indeed. And part of that living out is prophetic advocacy, rooted in a God who speaks for the last, the least, and the lost. Why is this important? Perhaps you've read some of the studies, national studies and surveys, that young people, many young people, including Latinos and Latinas, are abandoning the church because they feel it's irrelevant. And in many of those surveys, Latinos and Latinas, whites, Asians, African Americans, young people of every stripe are asking the church, where are you co-laboring with God's justice-making in the world and peacemaking in the world? And part of the call of a whole generation of young men and young women who are speaking into the church and who are trying to stay committed to a gospel that makes all things new is the question is, does the church care about what happens to the widow, the orphan, the stranger, the immigrant, the incarcerated, children? Does the, care, the, the church care about what happens to those who are impoverished, living in poverty. So when you read Proverbs 31, you might recall that the scripture is talking about speaking up for the poor. Yes, I know, I know. A lot of people spiritualize that. They mean, they say, oh, the poor in spirit, but that's not what the scripture says. And then other people take the scripture, the text out of its context. They take the scripture out of its context. And when they read, the poor will be with us always. They think that that means we should turn a blind eye to the issues of poverty. Actually, scripture says, because the poor are with us always, we should lead with a generous hand. Another way of saying it is with an open hand. And so advocacy is not a footnote to the gospel, is not something tangential to the gospel. It is part and part parcel of having a holistic, what, what Latin American evangelicals have called misión integral or integral mission, what we call here the whole gospel to the whole world. And for some years, 
Jeanette and I, my wife and I, and a coalition we lead, we've been working on issues of, of advocacy. And one of the things we've discovered, perhaps like you who are listening to me today, is that there's a resistance to it because people have laid, labeled advocacy work as too political. But really, really, advocacy is rooted in the character of a God who cares and is transforming the world. Did you know that if every church in the United States gave away all its money, they still wouldn't be able to do away with poverty? And that's why we need to advocate for things that deal with poverty in this country and around the world. Are we going to solve every problem? Absolutely not. But part of our prophetic witness and part of the credibility of the church is that we're not enclosed in four walls, but we're speaking up, like Proverbs says. We're raising our voices, as Mordecai told Esther in Persia when he told her, hey, don't think because you're in the kingdom, you and your family will escape. Who knows if God has brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. And Esther valiantly decides to speak up, not just to pray for her people, but to speak up and advocate for her people. Perhaps in our next podcast, you might have some questions. You might ask me to drill down a little deeper. What is advocacy? What does it mean to speak up on behalf of and with people who are being oppressed? Or you might ask, one of your questions might be, why does God care so much about justice? Why in the Old Testament prophets, God reminds Micah, he has told you, O mortal, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, Micah 6, 8, but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before your God. Have you ever asked yourself why God is so interested in justice? Why some of the main characters of the sacred texts of the Holy Bible, from Moses to John the Baptist in the New Testament, to the minor prophets, to Esther, to Nehemiah, are leaders who speak up on behalf of and with the people who most desperately need it. I think it's time for the Latino church to reclaim advocacy and prophetic justice, not as a project of the secular modern world, but as an intricate part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey, I want to thank you for joining me here in your podcast, Opticas, Faith and Latinidad. And I invite you to follow us on all our social media platforms at Pastor Salguero and elsewhere. You'll see that. But keep following us this, on this pop, podcast. And share it with your friends. Optica, Faith and Latinidad with Dr. Gabriel Salguero. Till the next time, keep your eyes open to see what God is doing. Optica.